Um, another one is safety too. So every exemption over the past 18 months has been granted. Patients have had to find their own access to supply, and this has been the government mainly just staying silent on it uh, and turning a bit of a blind eye. And while we have been asking for safe supply, uh, much of the reason we couldn't is because of uh, these amendments that were made to the SAP back in 2013 that have since changed. So now there is uh, you know, SAP access. So if we can get patients access to either some of the products that David had mentioned or to uh, one of the many um, you know, uh, psilocybin um, molecules or, or substances that are being produced by companies here in Canada, I hear that there are some synthetics. Uh, many people are growing mushrooms too. And they're also natural extracts. And I think what's important to note here is that we've got a wide variety of patients, for many of whom have had experience uh, with uh, certain mushrooms and certain strains and certain amounts, and, and that's what works for them. Um, and many doctors and, and patients that also would rather have one over the other. So being able to have options for patients is important. It's something we saw in cannabis. So you can't just give people one option. There should be multiple options. Uh, so it'll be exciting to flesh that out and see what options are available for Canadians. And um, I also think, uh, as, as Jag mentioned, you know, Canada isn't exactly the strongest uh, for having uh, in-country pharmaceuticals and drug development. Um, when we are, we should capitalize on that. We should make sure that we, we are self-reliant self on our own access. So if there are Canadian psilocybin producers, that's fantastic. Uh, and in this case, it looks like we'll be able to get that to patients. So safety, timing, both of those um, are fantastic. 